All right, everyone. The first common mistake we'll look at today is unnecessarily rebuilding assets. It wastes time, energy, and money to keep creating the same assets over and over. And that goes for small and large assets alike. If you're unaware of some of Ignition's built-in functionality that can be leveraged to avoid rebuilding assets, you might think that you need to build a screen or view for every different piece of equipment or area that's being depicted or interacted with in, inside a project. For example, if a project is going to be depicting equipment that has multiple instances in a plant or factory, like a mixing tank, conveyor, or a material handling robot, you might think there needs to be a dedicated screen or view for each one. The project browser shown here shows several views for mixing tanks and their corresponding pop-ups to display equipment detail, status, and controls. Even though the status and controls for these various tanks do interact with their own subset of tags, as long as the equipment is similar enough, only one tank view and one detail view need to be created to accomplish the same thing as these multiple repeated views shown here. Prior to beginning project development, it can be an extremely beneficial exercise to review equipment in areas that are similar enough to be represented using the same project assets. The solution for unnecessarily rebuilding assets is to create reusable dynamic visualization by leveraging view parameterization and indirect tag bindings in Ignition. This goes back to what Kent mentioned about Ignition being designed to allow you to reuse and modify assets. Creating reusable assets in this way is extremely beneficial because it generally leads to fewer overall project resources to manage and can significantly reduce not only initial development time and costs, but also time, effort, and the cost to make changes in the future. For example, perhaps after the initial development of a project, it is decided that a new status indicator is required for the tank view shown here. If there were 20 tanks in the project and dedicated views were created for every tank, then this change would need to be made 20 times for each tank view. However, if the project had been designed with a single tank view that leveraged parameterization and indirect tag binding, then the change would only need to be made once. Let's take a quick look at how view parameterization and indirect tag bindings can be leveraged to create dynamic reusable views. In the Ignition Designer, selecting a view will display its various properties in the Property Editor panel. When the view itself is selected, not the root container, but the top level view name, there's a unique section displayed within the Property Editor panel named Params. Simply add one or multiple parameters here. Then, when working in bindings or scripts within the view, this view, param this view parameter value can be accessed from the Browse Properties icon tool. Any bindings that may have been a direct tag binding can instead use an indirect tag binding. In this indirect tag binding, instead of a fixed path to a single tag, we can leverage a parameter value to use as a variable within the indirect tag binding, thus making the tag binding dynamic based on the parameter value. In addition to leveraging parameterization and indirect tag binding, repeater components can help reduce the complexity of a view. Repeater components are an easy way to create multiple instances of a view with the same look and feel without needing to add individual embedded views. In our previous webinar, we talked about how important consistent look and feel is to a project because it, help, it helps users acclimate to a screen quickly and effectively. Whether you're using the template repeater in Vision or the flex repeater in perspective, repeaters can be especially useful when visualizing many instances on screen. For example, in the screenshot shown here, the flex repeater is being used to display several tanks on an overview screen. Instead of manually adding and adjusting the position of each embedded view, the same thing can be accomplished by configuring the instances property of the flex repeater. This example is simply using a single parameter named tank name to make each view in the repeater display a specific tank name. Now I'll pass it over to Mara. Thanks, Derek. This is a really good time to talk about transforms. Transforms are an incredibly powerful tool for building your projects and taking advantage of those reusable components. Transforms can take a simple binding and transform that value into almost anything you want. You might map an integer value to some text or color codes or populate those repeaters that Derek just discussed. Getting to know transforms is key to unleashing the power of perspective. For more complex transforms, it's important to plan out how you build your script. A mistake I made before I really got to know these transforms was just to jump in with no planning. Let's say we have a named query listing our sites, and we know we want to use this for some dropdown options. Let's see how this works. So we're going to start a mapping here. 
We're going to add a binding to our options. We're going to choose our site list query. We've got site name, city, state. That's great. Let's see what we get in our drop down. Well, those are state abbreviations. I wanted my site names. Okay, I can add a transform. This is going to help me. Transform, I get down here and we'll pause here for a second. Okay, I've got a chance to apply a transform. I've got the value variable, and that's just the results of my name's query. But what am I going to do with it? I know I want to return the site names instead of the state abbreviations, but how do I translate that into drop down options? I could just never mind the transforms and go back and edit the named query, but that's not always going to be feasible for more complex components. A transform gives us the power to configure our components. Unless I have a great memory, I don't remember how the dropdown options are structured. And I'm not going to remember or want to try and type out a more complex view canvas or flex repeater structure. So let's take a step back and form a plan. The solution to poorly planned transforms is to start with a plan. You'll want to start with a standard component with no scripting or customization and get to know the structure. In most cases, you're going to be building a JSON object or an array of objects. Once you understand what type of results you want, copy that part of the structure into your favorite text editor. In this example, the standard dropdown has an array of instances. I've copied this text into the gray box. Each instance has a value and a label. Now we know how we want our results to look and we can plan for a transform. Here's a basic recipe for a script transform. This is going to return a list of options from results such as a named query. Step one, just define an empty list of options. This is going to be our return value. Step two, loop over the records returned by the query. Step three, build your instance. Use the copied structure text from the standard component. Every case is unique. In this dropdown example, we used fields from the query to fill in the ID field for the value and site name for the label. Step four, add the new instance to the list. Step five, return our options. And now we have a nice dropdown list of site names. So missing property changes is another mistake I see often. And I made this mistake when I first started using perspective two. People will ask me, I've got this transform. I clearly laid out what I want based on these properties, but when a property changes, nothing happens. Let's take a look at a simple example. So I have a label with two properties, state and mode. I want to change the text of the label based on both properties. Have a look at my transform script on the left-hand side of the slide. My zero state is off, two is warning, three is alert, and one is running. Now, when I'm in running state, I also want to look at the mode property to determine my text. I set up a binding to the text property and use state as the property. I look at both the state and mode properties to determine my text. This looks good, right? Let's play our video and see how this goes. All right, I'm going to change my state. I'm in warning, I'm in alert, I'm in running, this is great so far. Let's change my mode and wait a minute. I wanted my text to change based on mode. So the script looks good, but the transform is bound only to the state property and it's never going to reevaluate based on a change in mode. On the next slide, we will make a small change and fix this. The solution? is to use expression structures. Let's look at my new transform script on the left hand of the slide. Here we use an expression structure instead of a property binding. We are watching both the mode and the state properties for changes. In the first two lines of the script, we pull the state and mode values out of the structure and then evaluate both values to find our text. Let's see how this goes. I'm gonna go ahead and get into my running state and I'm gonna start switching modes and they're going to display my text successfully just like I wanted. So remember, if you're trying to base something off more than one property, use an expression structure. Now let's talk about using overlaid components for styling. 
I see this often and it always leads to maintenance headaches. For example, what if I want a color-coded status indicator with three states? I want red for alarm, yellow for warning, and green for running with no problems. Well, that's easy, right? I'll just create one component for each possible state, customize each component for its state, and set a custom binding on each one for the visibility. Then I can set all the components in the same position in a coordinate container. This approach seems obvious and easy, but it's actually very tedious and difficult to maintain. Each component will have to be custom configured. If a state is added, you will need to add a new component and customize it. In this example, we are just building a simple status indicator. But what if you want a more complex display and multiple configurations must be made? Even if the design here is simple, what if you want to use the same color and style for other screens? What if there is a new requirement for a different shade of red for all alert status in the project? The configuration is not reusable and not easy to maintain. Here's a better solution. Use style classes. If you create a style class for each state, then you can assign a style based on the state or any other property. The classes are reusable anywhere else in the project and they are maintainable because only updates, updates will only need to be made in one place. If we are not using the overlaid components, then we could take advantage of the mobile responsiveness of our Flex container. On the next slide, we will see an example of using a transform to map to each state. Okay, we've created multiple styles and just one component. We add a binding on the style property and use the state parameter. Next, we add a mapping transform. This just maps each state integer value to a style name. Any updates to the style class will apply to all components using that class. Formatting changes will only need to be made on this one component. No need to copy paste changes. Our next mistake is overriding themes. Perspective comes with several built-in themes, providing initial styling to all components. Style classes and inline styling will override this initial style and modify any rules that are defined in the theme. Themes are CSS-based and make use of inheritance. The themes folder shows us all the built-in themes, and if you have a look at the files, you can see examples of the styling and inheritance. The themes can be customized. This is an advanced feature, and we assume you have some knowledge of CSS if you are going to customize the themes. The most important file in the directory is the README file. Study this and make sure you fully understand this important documentation before you start. It's also a good idea to familiarize yourself with how the built-in styles are constructed before adding your own customizations. Your custom themes will be implemented by leveraging the C in CSS, Cascading Styles Sheet. You will add your own custom style sheet and then import that file. Do not overwrite the files in the existing theme folders. These files will be overwritten on startup and won't be usable by our clients. This is a common mistake and it is very frustrating to have your themes disappear. Okay, so the solution to overwriting your themes, use inheritance to build custom themes. You'll always start with the built-in themes. Base theme is the light theme. All other themes extend from the base. All other themes are derived from the base. You can use any one of the the derived themes, for example, dark cool or light warm, as an example for how to build your themes. Finally, you have two options for your custom theming. You can simply adapt the built-in theme with a few customizations, or you can create your own theme, which will then be available from the drop-down menu in the session properties. We can't cover everything you need to know about theming in this presentation, but I'll go over a few basics on the next two slides. Adapting a built-in theme is the quickest way to build in some customization. I recommend trying to achieve your desired styling by first using the style classes or custom properties in the designer. However, there are times when theme customization is necessary. The first thing you wanna to do to create is to create your own directory in the themes folder and then add a CSS file there with your custom overrides. Next, you will want to import this file into one of the entry point files. Always place your custom imports after other imports. 
use double quotes around file names, and remember the semicolon at the end of each line. In this example, I have imported some custom overrides into the light theme. Styling my, any, any styling in my overrides file will now be applied to the light theme. Now, as Kent likes to remind us, with great power comes great responsibility. You are responsible for maintaining and troubleshooting your themes. Custom theming is not part of the gateway backup. You need to maintain backups of your themes and be sure to copy these files onto new installs. You can also create your own custom theme. To do this, you will need to create your own entry file at the root of the themes directory. Always start with the built-in themes as examples. You can even copy one of the theme entry files as an example. The best ones to use are the derived themes, such as light cool or dark warm. Once you've added an entry file, you will be able to select your new theme in the session properties dropdown. Remember, you need to maintain backups of your custom themes. Back to you, Derek. Thanks, Mara. So this isn't so much mistakes as a shortcut that a lot of people just don't know about. Holding the Alt key and left clicking lets you immediately select through to the deepest component or container that the mouse cursor is hovering over. This may not seem like the most earth shattering tip, but it can save a lot of time, especially when working with a lot of nested containers in a view. In addition to this select through shortcut, there are a lot of keyboard shortcuts that can be very helpful. Be sure to review all of the available keyboard shortcuts as well as the documentation on select through with the links provided here. Thank you, Derek and Mara. Um, before we move on, let's do a quick recap. Uh, the first mistake we covered was unnecessarily rebuilding assets. And the solution is leveraging view parameterization and indirect tag bindings to create dynamic, uh, reusable visualization. Um, and uh, there was a question that had been asked at that time of, is this applicable only to perspective or can it be applied to vision two? And the answer is uh, you certainly can um, do a very similar thing inside vision. Um, and so um, all of the conversations about uh, repeaters and things like that certainly apply uh, to both visualization platforms. Uh, the next mistake we talked about is poorly planned transforms. Uh, should, or instead, yeah, poorly planned transforms. Uh, uh, instead, you should plan your transforms with the end result in mind before you begin. Um, and uh, transforms um, are only available in perspective. Um, now, missing property changes can be uh, alleviated by using expression changes, as Mara described. Um, that, that can be a game changer, I've found for me. Um, and then also that instead of overlaying components for styling, map transforms to a style class instead. Uh, and finally, instead of overriding themes, create your own custom theme. Uh, plus, we covered a bonus tip that saves a lot of time using Alt-Click to uh, select the deepest component or container. Um, and that actually exists in both vision and perspective. 